I'll say today in our talk called The Examination Fascination, uh, well, I'm going to continue to be looking at the principles of emotionally healthy leadership from that book, The Emotionally Healthy Leader by Peter Schizero. Now, his challenge for us is to be intentionally countercultural in the way that we lead and lead through an ever deepening relationship with God and an ever deepening dependence on him, not a dependence on uh, leadership principles that we see elsewhere. Um, we've done a few talks so far, the superpower of stillness as a leadership principle, the secret of success, which is doing the will of God, not how other people define success. Last week, we talked about leaning into our limits rather than always trying to overcome them. Today, we're doing the examination fascination. Now, this comes from Schizero's conviction that leading a team well means, uh, means making the development of your own spiritual life and the sp inner spiritual lives of those that you lead a top priority. Not all of the targets that you could be meeting, the ones that are easily seen and celebrated, but that inner journey. And the front of the book so wonderfully explores this with, hello, uh, with all of the deep roots um, that are growing underneath this beautiful tree. Um, in Australia, we are well known for a particular type of tree called the gum tree. And uh, it's a beautiful tree. It's very tall. There are some down the main road of Scone. But one of the issues is that in a flood, we often get those gum trees falling over um, and crashing onto houses because, because of the nature of Australia, a lot of those trees' roots are not very deep. They're very shallow because that way they can get the water that falls uh, thinly on top of the soil very, very quickly. But in a storm, as beautiful as that tall tree looks, they just come toppling over. And we know that leadership is very similar. I'm sure that all of us, if we took a few minutes, we could think of somebody, a leader, who we thought of highly only to find out five years, 10 years, 20 years into their leadership didn't have very deep roots and came toppling down. Now, because of this, Schizero goes as far to do something a little controversial in his requirements at his church that he lays out for the leaders of his church, right? He sets targets for his leaders, which is what we should all do, but they're not just external targets. He chooses to set specific internal target, targets and internal markers that he expects all of his leaders to do. So he actually says to them, I expect all of my leaders to be doing these specific spiritual practices, specific prayers at specific times of the day. Now, my first reaction to this when I read it was, oh, that can't be popular. Like, you're going to tell me what to do? You're going to tell me which prayers I'm supposed to be praying? Like, isn't that legalistic? And of course, it can become legalistic if we let the pendulum swing too far. But it's also a really beautiful example of loving those that you lead. As long as the pendulum hasn't swung too far, as long as we keep it in the middle, of saying, hey, I care about you, I deeply care about you and your continued development as a leader. And so because of that, I'm setting these standards that I want you to be making sure that you meet. So one of these things that he asks every single one of the leaders at his church to do every day is a particular prayer called the examine. Now, you might have heard of this before. I hadn't. I was actually talking to my husband about it and I said, oh, I've, I've started praying this prayer, the examine. And he said, no, 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 it's pronounced the examon. <laughs> and I said, no way. And he said, no, no, because I was pronouncing it examine. And then somebody corrected me and said it was the examon. So now I know it's the examon. I said, no, we're going to look this up. So we looked it up. Apparently it is pronounced examine. And the person who corrected Andrew was wrong. Anyway, <laughs> so we're looking at a prayer. It's called the daily examine. You might have heard of it before. Um, it's in Peter Scazzaro's church. He expects all of his leaders to pray at least once a day. He suggests at nighttime, but it's even better if it's prayed at midday and at nighttime. And I've actually been doing this prayer for a few weeks now, and it's been really good. And it's a way of being still and reflecting on your day and inviting God in to help lead an examination of our actions and our feelings and our motivations that we've been led by during the day. And so today, I'd like us all to have a go at taking part. Yeah, you've got it. Started by St. Ignatius. Yes, I was going to get to that in a minute. Uh, I'd like all of us to have a go, because it is midday, to have a go at uh, lead, letting God lead us through our own personal examination. Now, to do that, I'm going to share with you an infographic. Here we go. Let's see how well I do this. I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Sharing the screen. Sharing this. Can we all see this? Yes. 
Cool. So this is an infographic I found on the Daily Examine in six simple steps. So St. Ignatius of Loyola, I should have worked out how to pronounce that before I started this, uh, is a great saint for our busy and overscheduled lives. His first followers ran into the problem of not being able to pray often throughout the day. So St. Ignatius recommended a practice called the Examine, an introspective prayer done at the end of the day. I'm not going to read all of this out to you, but I thought it was helpful because it had these specific steps in it. The first one is that you find a quiet place. This can be a quiet place because in a minute we're going to get quiet, but maybe you'd like to try this later in a more quiet place. Then you start by identifying a moment of gratitude, something that you're thankful to God about. But this first part of the prayer is really about just remembering that God is big, so much bigger than we often remember and putting him in his rightful place of holiness and honour. Next step, number three, is ask for freedom. And that step is all about asking for freedom from our own uh, judgments and our own understanding of why we might have done things that day or um, how we might already see them and asking God to lead us through from a different perspective about the things that have happened in our day. Then we review our day. So if we do the prayer at midday, we just think, okay, well, how did I wake up this morning? And what did I do next? And then, oh, I had that argument. How did I feel about that? And then, oh, I felt a bit stressed as I was getting my clothes on. You just walk through the day. And what you do is you just ask God as you just mentally walk through your day to draw your attention to something that he might like to talk to you about, to draw attention to a particular emotion that you might have thought or a particular motivation of your heart at that moment. And then once you do, you just talk with God about it. In fact, you can talk to God about anything that's on your heart about what happened that morning. And then you finish your prayer. That's how you do it. And what eventually happens is as you do this daily, you begin to see a pattern in the way that you approach things or the way that you might miss God at certain moments of your day. And it gives you a moment of reflection where you can invite God in to lead you in, in how he might like you to grow um, the way you respond to certain events uh, during each day. And uh, it also gives you a heightened sense of awareness of God through your day, particularly at those moments where God might repeatedly go, hey, um, let's talk about this. And so when you come across that in your day, you're prompted to go, oh, let me act differently. So it's actually a really powerful prayer. So I would love for us right now to go through this examine, if that's okay with you. So we might be eating, that's all right. Um, but what I would love um, to invite you to do is just to create a moment of stillness in amongst yourself. And I'm going to do my best to do that, even though I'm leading. So let's just find a quiet place within ourselves. And let's just invite God to be here with us. And just in your own way, would you just thank God? Would you just tell him what you're grateful for? Or remember a time when his power so clearly came through for you. Just thank him. And then let's intentionally ask God to give us freedom. Freedom from our own biases, and the way that we so commonly like to see the events of our day, just ask him to help us to see things from, from, uh, from his perspective, with the eyes of God. All right, and then I just want to give us one minute, not too long. I'd love to invite us to think about our day from the moment we woke up until right now. And just to ask God to talk to us about something, anything, an emotion, a motivation, an action.
Now you might not have gotten very far through your day yet and, and that's okay. We're sort of doing a speed run of this. Um, but whatever point you've gotten up to, I would love to encourage you to pray this prayer later and to keep following that through, through the rest of your day. But if in your day so far in your head where you've gotten up to, God has um, brought something up for you, I would just love to invite you for a moment just to talk to God about that, about that moment, about that thought or emotion. Just invite him to talk to you about it and to see it differently. Father God, thank you for this brief time we've spent with you today, uh, having a go at the daily examine. And Lord, I pray that um, you would help us all to continue to dig our roots, roots down deep as leaders, first and foremost, to have our beautiful flourishing inner life with you that just overflows into all that we do and lead. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it for today. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of the examine before. I hadn't. Or examon, examon, as Andrew said. <laughs> Have any of you ever heard of the daily examine before? Yeah, I heard it and plus I'm at that point in the book as well. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good. There's so many good suggestions through the book. I find I, I've, um. I've not read it all at once. I've read like a couple of chapters and then stopped for a few weeks and then a couple of chapters and stopped. And I, I felt like this prayer actually came up at several points. So I thought I have to find out what it is. So yeah, it's good. Rich, have you ever heard of this prayer before? No, no, never heard of it. Okay. I've, I've, I've seen things that might be a little bit similar, but no, not that one. Yeah. I'm glad that the member of our group who had to go to host life group, I think she already knew what it was. So that's good. <laughs> All right, well, guys, I hope that's been a, um, a helpful point of stillness in the middle of your day today. And I hope that you both have excellent days from here on in. All right, see ya. Thanks, thanks babe. See you now.